Hey everybody, it's Rob the Backyard Gardener and I cannot catch a break on these tomatoes. I should have harvested some of my tomatoes a couple of days ago, but I was like, no, they're doing good. Let's leave them on the vine. I cannot wait for them to be red on the vine instead of pulling them off yellow like I usually have to do to avoid the pests. What I'm about to show you is my tomato vine area and um, it's a little bit of a disaster area, but I have grown it like this on purpose because the more foliage I have impeding sight lines to the fruit keeps the birds and pests away. Anyway, I needed to harvest some of the tomatoes yesterday and I failed to do so because I thought, give it one more day, everything is going good. Of course, this morning at 9 a.m. I come out and one of the tomatoes has already been started to get eaten. So we're gonna harvest them all today, even some of the ones that are more yellow than red, just because I don't wanna risk them. So this is the tomato area and I know it's pretty overgrown. But like I said, I've been doing it like this specifically so that it hides some of the fruit that we're about to harvest. I wanna go ahead and show you one of the brandy wines. This guy was fine yesterday. And now he's been dug into. <sighs> so we're gonna to have to harvest both of these today and uh, see how badly they got to this guy, which is okay. I'll just make a sauce out of it. But that's a pretty nice tomato. And again, this was just done this morning because last night at midnight, I took my dog out and took a quick peek at this and it was totally fine. So sometime between midnight and 9 a.m. and I would think that this would not be from a nocturnal animal. We don't have any rats or anything. This is either a rabbit, a squirrel or a bird. And judging by how it was pecked at, looks like beak marks here. I would say this is a bird. What a bummer. And let's go ahead and while we're down here, we're gonna have to grab this other one before it's taken a bite out of as well. I mean, they're close to being ripe. This one's all sorts of fancy, but either way, what are you gonna do? Luckily, I got to these now. I will leave the ones on the vine that are yellow and orange like that one you can see. And then there's another one down here. And yes, I do have tomato blight on this plant, but I'm not too worried about it at all. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of these other ones. This is probably not a brandy wine. It's probably a mortgage lifter that's been stunted coming over from the other tomatoes that are already here. I'm probably gonna take this one now because if I don't take it now, it will likely be eaten in the next couple of days. So we're just gonna take it and I'm gonna have to take some of these closer to being ripe ones. There's one down here I wanna grab as well. You can see some of the splitting. This is caused by inconsistent watering. I've gotta work on not having such inconsistent watering schedules on this side of the yard. But either way, we'll take it however they are because it does seal over pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab the basket. See what other goodies we have over here. I think I see quite a bit of riper tomatoes. These are mortgage lifters. They should be a lot bigger, but I'm not getting them that big. They should be about three times the size of this one in my hand. Of course, I'm not mad at it. Still a nice sized tomato, almost as big as the brandy wines. We've got a couple of smalls back here. We're just gonna grab them really quick. Time to grab them all at once. Little bit of uh, damage there. I don't know if that happened when it was younger, but it's sealed over nice, so the tomato should be completely fine. We'll go ahead and add those to the basket. We do have a couple of them right here that I'm gonna go ahead and grab. Not quite ripe yet, but they will ripen on the counter. And I'll show you some of the ones I grabbed last week that I've already got in the fridge. So we'll grab those two right there. And I'm pretty sure I saw another one back in here that's mostly ripe. Yeah, that one's mostly ripe. We'll grab this small one. This one's a little bit early, but that's okay. It's a little one anyway. And now we'll also grab another one I saw up in here. Right back there. Pretty nice as well. Looks like I grabbed a little bit of the vine with that one, maybe too much. 
And I will take another quick peek. I think we have a couple more that I can go ahead and take off now. Got one here. And I think I saw another one back in here. I did. And like I said, typically I don't pull them off at this stage. I like to give them a little more red. But now that we have that one eaten into, the longer these sit out here, the worse it's gonna be for them. But about three days on the countertop and these will be ripe. Matter of fact, not even three days on some of them. Some of these will be ready in a couple of days. But let me see one more peek at the vine and if I grab any more, I'll show them to you. So here's all the tomatoes. Again, some of them are definitely nowhere near ripe. But once they start to turn yellow or pink, they'll ripen on the counter. The problem with ripening them on the counter the rest of the way is that the fruit will then use some of its own flesh, the interior, to help use the energy to ripen it. So you won't get as much flesh typically and you'll use some of the, or you'll lose some of the sweetness that you would have got when you counter ripen. Either way, these will be just fine. Once they start to turn, technically you can harvest them and they will do the rest. I will take the most green ones and probably place them in a brown paper bag so that they can ripen a little quicker and more together. I pulled this one off because it also had a little bird mark on it as well. We have several more tomatoes on those two plants, or I guess four plants, because there's two of each, but we're gonna let them take their chances out here over the next couple of days, see if I can ripen them maybe uh, next week and um, pray the birds, now that they found the food source, don't come back, or at least don't come back picking at the unripe ones. Although this one's a little bit scary. Where is it at right here? The fact that they went after this one and it's yellow. All right, just wanted to show you the quick tomato harvest. I might have a few other tomato clips I'll add to this. Maybe in a couple of days, I'll bring you back in and show you how much more ripe these are, but I wanted to get at least the harvest part of this clip done. I almost forgot, I told you I would show you some of the other tomatoes we harvested a few days ago. We've got five here. We've already eaten two of these mortgage lifters, plus we ate one of the larger brandy wines already. I made some sauce out of them, but I wanted to show you the ones we harvested and the difference in color between the one we left on the vine, which is almost fully ripe, and then the one we had to pull off early. So we're hoping that this one will get somewhere around this color because this is the color where they're fully ripe. We'll have to see with damage on this one, I'll have to go ahead and cut that away and probably put this in a Ziploc bag and hope that it can ripen before it spoils. We'll have to see. So it's been a few days later and I figured I better start pulling off some of these tomatoes. They're not 100% as ripe as I would like, but if I don't pull them off, I will not get them because the birds and everything will get to them. And again, I know the tomato area is a complete bushy disaster, but the only way I can protect these tomatoes from predators and the heat is to let them grow very bushy. But I'm gonna pull off a few more and uh, we'll take a final look at the harvest, plus a peek at the ones we had in the house for the last couple of days and see how much more red that they have gotten just sitting on the counter.
Well, I've been going through a lot of tomatoes. I've even made some tomato sauce, which I didn't want to film this time because I do have links to my tomato sauce videos down below, or you can check out my cooking video playlist. Not that I've done a lot of cooking, but I do have some of videos in the playlist. You can check it out. These have been sitting on the counter since I've harvested them for a few days, some four or five days and some even up to a week, but I wanted to give you a good look at them. They're kind of stacked pretty good in there. These are the ones that I'm going to uh, use here really quickly because they're starting to get a little bit of age to them or they have busted skins and I don't want any of the fruit flies or pests to get in them. These ones were ones that were damaged when I took them off the vine. I put them in a bag so they wouldn't get as much flies and things landing on them. I'll probably cut off some of the bad spots, but I just wanted to show those to you. I'm definitely gonna cook these and make a sauce out of them after I cut off the majority of the bad stuff. Wanted to set the overhead camera up and go ahead and cut open this brandy wine and see how it looks inside. I love the tomatoes that get this cracking all over them. I know it's from overwatering or because we had a lot of rain and it just split the skin, but it should be fine. There's a slight bit of discoloration at the bottom, so I might have to cut some of that away, but I think the tomatoes should be good. Figured I'd go ahead and taste test this one, take a look inside, see how meaty it is, and see what it looks like. Let me go ahead and set the camera up, and we'll take a peek. So I'm just gonna use a small paring knife just to cut out the center stem piece. This is what I like to do. Obviously, we're not gonna be using this at all. And this one was picked off the vine before it was fully red, so I'm just curious to also see how much more ripe it got in the middle and what it looks like. Well, it definitely looks juicy as can be in there, and that looks like a pretty good brandy wine. Let's go ahead and cut it in half here and take a look inside. Yeah, looks fantastic. Little discoloration down here, and that's from that, that dent that we had or that bruise. So I'm not too concerned about that right now. Let's go ahead and cut it into a small slice right here. Definitely looks pretty good. Very juicy. The aroma is like no other tomato. These brandy wines are crazy for their flavor, their sweetness, and their aroma. Now, I typically like to add just a little salt and pepper. You don't really need to, but I like to. Let me go ahead and do that. We'll add just a little pinch of some sea salt and just a little bit of pepper, maybe a little too much pepper, but I'm a pepper fanatic. So let's go ahead and uh, give this guy a taste test. Man, that's delicious. You know, it's funny. I never really loved tomatoes growing up. And it wasn't until I was older that I was able to appreciate tomatoes for their flavor. And I think it's because I was raised on store-bought tomatoes but homegrown ones are fantastic. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that tomato harvest. I've got a potato harvest coming up in a couple of days as well, so keep an eye out for that. I also wanna make mention that I will have an update to some of my Grown From Seed series and possibly a peach harvest coming as pretty soon as well for my Loring peach. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, happy gardening and thanks for watching.